Senator of Dakota is recognized. I ask that the quorum call be dispensed with. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to speak today to call attention to my home state of North Dakota where we have terrible flooding occurring. We have uh, flooding today on the Suris River and the community of Minot is now in process of evacuating more than 11,000 people from their homes. In truth, we've had tremendous challenges with flooding all spring throughout the state of North Dakota. Red River Valley, the Cheyenne River Valley, James River Valley around Devil's Lake, the Missouri River, Bismarck, Mandan area, up and down the Missouri, other points throughout western North Dakota, and today it's in north central North Dakota. The Suris River is flooding not only the community of Minot, but also communities upstream to the north, small communities, counties, rural areas, and downstream as well, creating real hardship uh, for our citizens. And so, even as I speak, more than 11,000 people are leaving their homes uh, in and around the community of Minot. The Minot community is about something over 40,000 people, so somewhere between a third and a fourth of, of our citizens in that community in the region are being displaced from their homes and uh, their businesses. And our thoughts and our prayers go out to all of them. And at the same time, we must do all we can uh, to help them, both now and at this time of need, but also uh, in the days coming as we go forward. Minot and the region have been in this flood fight for some time. Uh, in fact, together with the Corps of Engineers, with the National Guard, with local contractors, uh, with the local officials, state support, the federal agencies, Corps of Engineers, the citizens have been fighting uh, a battle against flooding for, for months this spring. And they've built up their defenses. They've built levees along the river, the Suris River, that flows through the Minot community and through the region. They've built those levees up to an elevation of 1556. So they've built levees and dikes along the river. And in addition, years ago, the community in fact, levied a sales tax on itself to help build dams in Canada, Rafferty Dam and Alameda Dam, to try to have permanent flood control in place. So this is a, this is a community and this is a region of our state that has worked very hard using its own local dollars along with state and federal sources to build permanent flood protection, dams in Canada, as well as levees along the river. Those defenses have stood for more than 30 years and protected the community in the region uh, from flooding. But this time, they're not enough. As I say, the elevation is about 1556 on those, on those levees along the river, and it looks like the crest will be 1563, seven to maybe 10 feet higher uh, than the levees provide defense. And so that means that People have to leave their homes and their businesses and their uh, property. Ironically, just three weeks ago, uh, with the projections that we had at that time, roughly 10,000 to 11,000 people were forced to leave their homes at that time. But fortunately, the crest came in lower than was projected, and with the work they were able to do on the levees, raising the levees yet again, they were able to keep the water within the banks of the Suris River, and so people were able to return to their homes uh, and their property was not damaged. But unfortunately, that is not the case now, and already the water is rising to the very tops of the levees. And as I say, the crest is projected to be well above those levees. So the first priority must be to keep people safe, to protect lives, to protect people. And the mayor, Mayor Zimbelman, is working with local officials and our governor, Governor Jack Dalrymple. Uh, the National Guard is there uh, on the order of 500 National Guardsmen are helping with this evacuation uh, process. Local law enforcement, uh, fire emergency responders, they're all engaged and we truly appreciate uh, their help and their efforts. Minot Air Force Base, a major Air Force Base uh, for our nation is located right near the community. I think there are on the order of 12,000 or more people that live at that Air Force Base. Some of the 
airmen and women uh, that are stationed at base, of course, live in the community, and those uh, men and women of, of the Air Force are helping the community. My Air Force base is providing a place for shelter for our citizens and providing help. And I've spoken with the Air Force officials, and we truly appreciate their help with manpower, with transportation, and with shelter. Also, Minot State University, a local university, is providing a shelter for people that need it in the community. And we have the relief organizations there as well, the Red Cross, the Salvation Army, and others. And of course, in addition to all of that, we have citizens helping each other. And that is truly the North Dakota way. And they're doing a, a fine job. As a matter of fact, in the recent evacuation that I mentioned just several weeks ago, even though more than 10,000 people were evacuated, very few ended up staying in the shelters because friends and family, caring people in the community and in the region uh, provided a place for so many to stay. And of course, we know that that will happen again as people open up their homes to help others in a time of need. But clearly more help will be needed and help with recovery will be needed as well. And so that means Homeland Security, that means FEMA, that means the other federal agencies as well. Uh, many homes and many businesses will be flooded, and those homes and businesses will be likely in floodwaters uh, until into July. And so that assistance will be very much needed, very much required. So that means things, programs like public assistance and individual assistance through FEMA, to help with public infrastructure that's damaged, to help individual homeowners uh, with damage to their homes will be necessary along with uh, flood insurance, SBA disaster assistance for businesses because this flood is right through the very central part of the community. So it affects not just homes and property, but many businesses as well. And of course it will affect public infrastructure uh, to that end, I'm already meeting with the director of FEMA, Craig Fugate, this afternoon, and uh, we must be committed that process, uh, to that process to help all we can, uh, both in this flood fight and in the ensuing recovery. And, you know, it's been a real challenge this year as you look around the country, as you look around our state, the flooding that I described, not just here in Minot, but throughout our state, and as you look around the country with flooding up and down the Missouri, up and down the Mississippi, and you look at the tornadoes, and you look at now the fires that are occurring in the Southwest, and this really has been a tough year. It's a challenging year. And so we need to pull together, and we need to help each other. And I know we will, uh, because that's the American way. Now, that's the way we've always done it. And I know that uh, we'll be there to help each other, to help our citizens in Minot, in the Minot region, throughout the state of North Dakota, but in other places around the country as well. As I say, that's the American way, and we will prevail in this endeavor.